<laughs> what I find amazing about God is that He never has a plan B. Oh, that's going to sink in on some of you. You'll get that when you get home. Right. He's never had a plan B. It's His plan. Amen. Amen. It's His plan. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All the decisions you've ever made, He's already seen. And you haven't even gotten there yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, by direction of the Holy Spirit, we're starting a new series this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I, I, you know, I really enjoy expectation, as you all know. I really enjoy launch out, right? Because the word of the Lord to Faith Bible Church for 2022 is launch out, right? And so now this is the next step. Amen. Somebody say next step. Next, next step. step. You see, we saw back at the beginning of the year in Luke's Gospel, the fifth chapter, where Jesus is walking along the beach and he's teaching, right? And he comes to three boats. And all the people are kind of pressing up against him, and he steps into Peter's boat. And he says, "Hey, can you push out a little bit? Let me teach the people." Amen. And what does Peter do? He pushes out a little bit. Jesus teaches the people, and then I find it amazing, right, that God, who gave you that platform to begin with, that job that you're currently working at, that family that you're currently in, that neighborhood you're currently <coughs> residing in, He asks for permission to use your platform that He gave you. Amen. Amen. All the skills, all the gifts, all the talents, all the abilities that you have that have been given to you by God. Right. He asks for permission to use them to help advance His kingdom. Right. Are you listening to me? Right? And I listen to some of you. There are a whole bunch of computer guys in here. Oh, really? You, you can use computers? Yes. All the people that you're around. Come on. Clients from Connecticut to California. Come on. Business associates all over the globe. He's using the platform that he gave you to talk to them, Amen. to reach them. Are you listening? And he turns to Peter and he says, Now, launch out into the deep. Right? And we saw it, did we not? That Jesus invites each one of us to be part of the miracle that he wants to perform in our lives. That's what I find also so remarkable about God is that he also wants us to be part of of the mirror. He wants us to take part in it. it does, it's not just to sit back and watch God do it. The Bible says that when they launched out into the deep, Jesus said, now let down your net for a great big catch. And Peter had all of his excuses. I've been doing it all night long. I've been doing it my way. I've got nothing. I'm going home. I'm tired. Right? But nevertheless, at your word. Amen. That word has not changed. Jesus is still telling you, let down your nets. Yeah. Some of you have been reluctant. Right. He's talking to me. Some of you have been reluctant. Mm -hmm. Amen? To let down your net. Right? Maybe it's, so, you know, I've tried this before, and people, you know, they've started yelling at me about, you know, don't talk to me about your Jesus. I've done this before, and they might think that I'm one of those crazy Christians. Mm -hmm. I'll take all the labels you got. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer in Jesus. Yeah. That makes me radical. Then bless God, I'm a radical. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. If it makes me an extremist, then I'm an extremist. Right. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the healing, delivering power of Almighty God. I believe yeah. that there is no other name given to man by way of a man may be saved, but the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. I've been translated. I'm different. Yeah, amen. 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 And he's he's asking me now, okay, listen, let's go out into the deep. You let down the nets, and you're going to haul in a big catch. And the Bible says in the NLT translation that as they were hauling in the nets. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. They. <laughs> Jesus and Peter working together on the miracle. Hauling in those fish that they began to call over to Peter's business partners, James and John. Hey, oh, get over here. And you know the story. They catch net breaking, bolt sinking loads of fish. Amen. So much resource that for the next three and a half years that Peter, James, and John traveled with Jesus, 
You never hear them turning to Jesus and say, got to go back home and get some money for the family. The babies need new shoes. They're going to school. I got to pay for school. Got to pay for shoes. Mama needs some groceries. Got to go home. Got to do some fishing. You never see that. And the question that the Holy Spirit asked you back in January is, what would you do with three and a half years of revenue right now? Apparently, a lot of you haven't been thinking about it. This is time to remind you. This what the Bible says it's good to put you in remembrance. Right. You might want to sit down and calculate what three and a half years of revenue is yeah. and say, okay, God, if you said I could have it, here I am. Yeah. Send it. Right. Whatever you need me to do. Right. Amen. 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 Oh uh, yeah, I got I got a couple of amens. I think some of you are starting to get a hold of this here. Mm -hmm. Right? When, when, uh, and listen, let's just, I have to pull the covers off of us. I apologize. No, I'm not going to apologize. Right? <laughs> when the Lord gave us the number to sow towards the building, right? Can I be transparent? <laughs> the hands were shaking yep. when we were writing the check. Come on. Yep. But He has visited it back on us already. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Already. Amen. Amen. All. Already. Amen. It's already back. Amen. And there's more coming. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. Ha hallelujah. So much abundance that we don't know what to do with it. No, no, I've got a plan for all of it. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Hallelujah. And then we saw expectation. Didn't we? Mm -hmm. That it was a seedbed for miracles. Right. That all the difficulty that you've gone through in your life has created the seedbed for the Word of God to start bringing forth fruit in your life. Right. Every yeah. difficulty, every challenge, come on, uh, every defeat, every failure, right. right before you came into the kingdom. Because now that you're in the kingdom, I'm going to start preaching. I'm going to start preaching right over here. Yeah. Someone over here is pulling it right out of me. <laughs> right? Before you came into the kingdom, you might have been a loser. Yeah. Might not have amounted to much. You get into the kingdom, you have no choice but to win. Right. Yeah. You have no choice. Yep. Now, thanks be to God, who sometimes leads me to triumph in Christ. No, He always leads me to triumph. Oh, sometimes I experience setbacks. Excuse me? Sometimes your enemy will show up and try to distract you. It's not a setback. Listen, if you won't quit, Oh, hear me. Mm -hmm. If you won't quit, you can't be defeated. Amen. That's right. You know, I'm a big fan of the Rocky movies. You know, y'all know this, <laughs> right? The theology of Rocky. So the theology of Rocky V goes like this. Hey, yo, Tommy, I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> More round. You need to look your enemy right in the eye this morning and say, devil, yeah. one more round. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, that, 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 did you hear that bell? You should start getting worried. Because <laughs> the champion's getting up off. Come. Yep. Somebody say, get up. Get up. Uh, it's yeah. time for you to get up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're starting a new series this morning. It's time for you to get up. Yeah. Glory to God. The new series. Becoming God inside minded. Mm. Becoming God inside minded. Jesus said this in Matthew 28, Lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. Yeah. Right? And we all, we all quote that. We put that low in there because that sounds cool. Lo, I am with you. What, what does low mean? Well, according to Rocky, that's yo. <laughs> yo, I'm with you. Hallelujah. We're going to go to our foundational scripture, however, this morning. Are you ready? Yeah. Go to 1 John chapter 4. And strap in. First John chapter four. While you're all turning those pages back here, we're all stuck together. We'd like to welcome all of you fine folks that have been joining us on these various social media platforms. It's a privilege to minister the word of God to you this morning. However, we would like to invite you to come join us here at 28 Chapel Street and get under this corporate anointing. Amen. Amen. 
There's something to be said where a body of believers gathers together in one accord. According to the Bible, in the book of Acts, when they were gathered together in one accord and they were praying, the place that they had gathered in was shaken. I don't know how many of you come back to church next week if this building started to shake. But I think that when you left this building, you'd have no question in your mind that there is a God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. By the time we get done with this series, not only will you not have any doubt in your mind or your heart that there is a God, but that He currently lives on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that was His design, His intent, and His plan from the beginning. Hallelujah. Are you there in 1 John chapter 4? Yes. You dear children. Somebody say he's talking to me. He's talking to me. God has a moniker for you. He considers you dear children. So he's speaking specifically to born again believers. You cannot be called a child of God unless you're born again. I don't care what politicians say. I don't care what the culture says. Right? We are all created in the image of God. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, you want to go ahead and flip there, right? Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God. Yeah. Right? And then down there in verse 23, 24, it says, And then He created man in His own image. Right? And likeness. So, listen to me, church. Every person on the planet is created in the image of God. Amen. Let me say every person. Every person. And every person on the planet is created in the likeness of God. Everyone. 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 But not all of them are children of God. There are some who choose not to be. And I think that's the saddest thing ever. Yes. Sincerely. Especially those that have been given the opportunity. They've heard the gospel being preached. right? They know that not only is there a God in heaven, but that He sent His Son 2,000 years ago. And that His Son led a perfect life and went to a cross and died in the, in the place of all humankind. Went to hell, paid the penalty, was raised to, uh, to life again by God, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. That's the gospel that you believe. Amen? Amen. And, and listen, what you believe matters. Hallelujah. What you believe matters. Mm -hmm. There are some people out there that say, oh, there's a lot of ways to get to heaven. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, you know, the head of the church, Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. No one. So if you're in this room this morning, if you're watching us out there on all those social media platforms, you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and you've confessed Him as the Lord of your life, number one, you believe the right thing. Amen. Right? Amen. Because there is a God. Yep. And He did send His Son, Jesus. And Jesus did die in our place. Yep. And God did raise Him from the dead. Yep. And God did seat Him at His own right hand. Right. Amen? And the most remarkable thing in Colossians chapter 1 happened to you and I. Amen. When we confess Jesus as the Lord of our life, I you I say that a lot, Pastor. Right? Because most people, most Christians say, well, you have to say the sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. Show me the scripture. Show me the scripture. What's our favorite saying here? Show me the scripture. Yep. Right? Whatever you believe. Okay, we've got to do this exercise again. Whatever you believe, write it down on a piece of paper and go into the Word of God and find it in there. And if you can't find it in there, you've got to throw that out. Yep. Right? Yep. Man's tradition. you got to throw it out. Amen. The only thing that matters is the Word of God because the Bible says the Word of God stands forever. Yep. The Bible says that God has exalted His Word even above His name. Amen. Are you listening to me, church? Amen. So, write down your belief systems. Write down what you believe. And if you can't find it in the Scripture, you got to throw it out. Well, I heard that there was these healing crystals that you could use. Show me the scripture. <laughs> now listen, the devil is a great masquerader. Right? I remember I was traveling with a co-worker. We were going out to Arizona. 
and uh, somebody in, in the group that we were traveling with wasn't feeling well, and I laid my hands on them, and God healed them. Like instantly, all the symptoms left their body. And this, this young woman that we happened to be traveling with who fancied herself some type of philosopher <coughs> said, well, you know, you're, you're practicing Reiki. I said, who? <laughs> I never heard of it. Reiki? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, squeeze me. She goes, oh yeah, you know, it's, 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 a, it's in the, the mystical Eastern arts. You know, where, where you touch people and you, you line chakras and cats and dogs and not live good group and I said, uh, no. I said, I don't know about any of that. I've never heard of any of that. What I do know is that when believers lay their hands on the sick, right. the sick recover. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's what I believe. <laughs> and that's the reason why they got healed. I don't know about Reiki. Don't know about burning sage. I don't know. You put these certain crystals and you line them up such and such a way. You, you, you get these space aliens. <laughs> Come on. There is a God. There is a God. And listen to me, church. He is all love. He is all power. Come on. He is all glory. He is all perfection. James says it like this. The Lord's brother says it like this. He says, in him there is no variableness or shadow of truth. There's no darkness in him whatsoever. He is light within light within light. He is peace within peace within peace. He's joy within joy within joy. And he is currently living on the inside of every believer. Amen. You are a carrier. Right. Some of you are going to get this. You're a carrier. Of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Paul writes it like this. In Corinthians he says. We have this treasure. Yeah. In earthen vessels. Right. Right. Are you there in 1 John chapter 4? Yeah. 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 Do we, did we cover the children part? Yeah. That you are children of God. When you confess Jesus. Yeah. As the Lord of your life. Right. You have a new name now. Child of God. And not everybody on the planet is a child of God. I don't care who says what. Jesus even said of the Pharisees of his day, you are of your father, the devil. That's right. That's what yeah. he said. Religious leaders. Yeah. He called them children of Satan. Yeah. Why? Because the work they were doing was so counterproductive right. to the kingdom of God. Right. Stacking furniture on top of the law. Making lives so miserable for the Jew of the day. Yeah. Right? That they didn't know who they were being more abused by, the Romans right. or the Jewish leaders of the day. Right. right? Come on, listen, we need to know our Bible. You need to know that the Romans were trying to tax them out of existence. Yeah. Right. Amen. But you also need to know that the Jewish leaders were trying to tax them out of existence. Yeah. Right? If you happen to own some land. Right? And you were a farmer, yeah. and so you'd go out and you would farm your fields, but you had to live in the city because you had to you know, bring your family inside the walls. Right? right? But you needed to go uh, over to the temple, which, you know, uh, you got to go to the temple. You've got to go there seven times a year. There's seven feasts. You've got, you got to go, and you've got to bring a sacrifice. Right. And the high priest happens to be the one that owns right. all of the sacrificial animals, and you've right. got to buy them from him or his sons in this case. Right. This is what, where, when Jesus came to the planet. Right. right, it was all Anna's son, Anna's sons that owned the fields. That right. owned the, come on, yep. and uh, you couldn't afford sacrifice. Well, you would sell some of your land. Right. Yeah. And the next thing you found yourself working the land you used to own mm -hmm. for them. Right. Sounds like Does that sound like a great system? <laughs> right. It was into the midst of all of that. You need to hear me, church. It was into the midst of all of that that Jesus of Nazareth stepped and said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
What was he saying? You don't need to rely on the government. You don't need to rely on religious leaders. What you really need to be relying on is God himself. That's the way he designed it. That's the way he intended it. There's something about when God takes up residency on the inside. I'm getting ahead of myself. But I feel like preaching this morning. So we're just going to let it go. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's something about when God takes up residency on that victim mentality gets blown out. Amen. Amen. I'm no longer a victim of circumstance. Amen. Environment. Lack of environment. Lack of resource. It doesn't make a difference if you were born on the tracks, never mind on the other side. When the champion of the universe takes up residency on the inside of you. He says, dear children. Did you see this? Put that back up there again for me. What scripture are you on? In 1 John 4. Dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater. The one who is in you. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, the one in me is greater than the one in the world. And just in case you don't know, the one in the world is Satan. He's real. I said he's real. Yes. And he's out there. The Bible says Jesus himself roaring like a lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, independent sheep. Oh, I, I worship God my own way. Yeah, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to gather with a body of believers. I, I worship God my own way. If your way isn't God's way, yeah. one of them has to go. Right. That's right. That's right. And seeing as He's God and you're not, right. I'm saying your way has to go. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He says, those who worship me That's right. Right. must worship me in spirit and in truth. And in truth. Amen. Now you need to be here on Friday nights to find out that you're a spirit Amen. that Amen. lives inside yeah. of the body. That has a mind, a will, and emotions. And that nine times out of ten, your mind, your will, and your emotions, your soul, and your body are going to be pulling against the things of the Spirit. Yeah. Right. They're going to try to take you in an opposite direction. Right. Why? Because that's the way it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Your flesh, my flesh, we inherited Satan's nature. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. We were separated from God. Oh, you're not always. Oh, some of you are going to get a hold of this. We were of our father, yeah. the devil. Amen. Huh? Yeah. But then that day, yeah. whoo, whoo, when Jesus showed up yeah. and found you on the side of the road, broken yeah. and bleeding, robbed and stolen from, beaten up by life, destroyed by circumstance, situation, yeah. people, nothing working out for you, things coming against you. He found you on the side of the road and said, not you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You're mine. I claim you for myself. Amen. Come on into the kingdom. Come on into my house. I'll take care of you. He said, okay, Jesus, I believe. I believe you're the son. Let's say that out loud. Jesus, Jesus. Yes. I, believe. I believe you're the son, you're the son of the living God. The living God. And, I and I believe you died in my place. Yeah. And, I and I believe that God raised you from the dead. Yeah. And I believe yeah. that you're seated at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. And I believe yeah. that I am seated with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The day you made that confession, the day you spoke those words, you translated yourself out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Oh, and you changed the trajectory and the course of your life where you were going down in flames and doom and gloom and yeah. despair. And you could achieve all types of success here on the planet. But if you get to the end of your life and don't have Jesus, yeah. if you don't have God living on the inside of you, you will encounter God without Him. Yeah. Oh. 
avoid it, I can see how serious it gets. Yeah. Why? Because when we start talking about God, we start talking about His anointing. We start talking about His presence. He shows up. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says yeah. where two or three are gathered in His name, He's there. His presence has showed up in this room. And we begin to recognize, if I don't have Jesus, how can I stand in front of a holy God? Yeah. Let me help you. You can't. As a matter of fact, you're kept in a holding cell Amen. called hell yeah. when you step out of your body, when your spirit steps out. Come on. Okay. And in that holding place, I am convinced, not only according to the Scripture, right, but Jesus Himself describing it, it's a place of torment. It's a place of being separated from God. What does that mean? You see, church, let me help... Let me help you get a hold of this. What you're going through right now, what we experience and encounter in life right now, is all of the hell you're ever going to encounter. Amen. Hallelujah. And here's the bite of the apple on the other side. If that's axiomatic, and it is, that's the truth, and it is, then this is all the heaven that unbelievers experience, is what they experience here in this world. They don't get to absolute peace, okay. joy, yeah. being in His presence, right. living with Him forever. Mm -hmm. They go to this terrible place where they're separated from Him forever. And if God is life, mm -hmm. then the place they're going to is death. Okay. If God is hope, then the place they're going to is hopelessness. Right. If God is peace, then the place they're going to is anxiety, torment, filled yeah. fear. Yeah. Right? There's a wonderful video out. Uh, Bill Wiesman, I believe his name is, 23 Minutes in Hell. Watch it. Right? He's a born, he's a born again believer. Right? Real estate, right? He was in he's in business. And he had an encounter where he was allowed to go to hell as an unsaved person for 23 minutes. I won't do it any justice here. Right? But he described it like this. He said uh, he grew up in California and he was a surfer. And, you know, he bought the surfboard, right, you know, paddling around, surfing, da-da-da. And one morning he was out there and he was attacked by a shark. And the shark actually got a hold of him. He said, and the terror, right, because I don't know if the shark bit through the board and got his eye. I don't know, I don't have the whole, right, I don't have it exact, right. But the terror that I'm about to die, I'm about to get eaten by this shark. He said, the absolute horror and terror of that he said, was barely the beginning of the horror and terror I felt as I was descending into hell. Where there is no God. There is no strength. There is no peace. There is no joy. And those things that drove you here on the planet, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, those are the things that torment you the most there. Oh, by the way, there's no communication. See, God is communication. The Word. What does the Word mean? Words communicate. Yeah, in hell there is no communication. In other words, you don't walk up to somebody and go, Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, these flames are awful today, aren't they? You see other souls being tortured. You hear their screams. But you can't communicate to them. The Bible says that your name is even covered. So they don't even know your name. That God stood in front of the tomb of your life and said, not you. You're, you're mine. You're my, I, I want you for myself and my kingdom. Now listen to me, church. This is the message that we're bringing to the earth today. It's not about turn or burn. It's about God loves you so much He doesn't want you to go there. Right? If you know the original intent and the original design for hell, you'll know this. That it was designed for Satan and the fallen angels that followed him in the rebellion. And that was it. Nobody else was supposed to go there. Hallelujah. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness. It was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. 
It was God who spoke those words in the beginning to Jesus. And Jesus spoke them to the Holy Spirit. Do you remember John chapter 1? It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God, and was with Him in the same, was with Him in the beginning, and then the Word became flesh. In verse 14, and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. All things were created by Jesus, for Jesus, right. through Jesus. Amen. All things. Yep. What? Even Lucifer? All things. Mm -hmm. I said all things. This is the power of deception. It works in the presence of God. Lucifer, whose name literally means being of light, was so deceived that he was so much better than God that he convinced one-third of the angels through false doctrine. This is the pernicious nature of false doctrine, which is why I want a mission to stamp it out. That one-third of the angels actually followed Lucifer in the rebellion. False doctrine in heaven. They followed him. And they all ended up separated from God forever. You with me? So, was it God's intention to design and release evil into the earth? No. He knew it was going to happen. Though it's a little my God, it's not plan B. He knew it was going to happen. He had a plan before all of it happened. The Bible says, before he laid the foundations of the earth, the Lamb of God was slain. So Jesus had already agreed to come to the earth and be the sacrifice for us before God ever said, like me. Amen. Amen. But that Holy Spirit of God, who was hovering over the face of the deep, waiting to hear the Word of God, why? So that He could carry it out. That same Holy Spirit lives to do the will of God and to point to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He is the revealer of the will of God. And now we're ready to take the next step. Hallelujah. Listen, this is happy time. Amen. You know, the Holy Spirit of God doesn't do these things by random. Amen? Yeah. We're getting into a series right now that I believe is the next step for Faith Bible Church because we're ready to take the next step. Amen. I shouldn't even say it like that. Because He believes. You see, you have to get excited about this. If God believes that we're ready for the next step, then we are. Amen. You see, He doesn't miss it. Now, I could miss it. But I'm so sure of this on the inside. I'm as sure of this as God made little green apples. We're ready for the next step. God inside minded us. Come on. God inside minded. We're always going to be aware that He is on the inside of us. That whenever I show up, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they show up with me. It's not a fair fight. I didn't commit to this fight to lose. I am bringing the A team. Yeah. Yeah. I would like you to meet the owner. <laughs> I would like you to meet Amen. the general manager. Yep. And I would like you to meet the coach. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just the player. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bought the A team. Yeah. I bought the owner. Come on. Yeah. I bought the general. Jesus is the head of the church. Yeah. I, bought, I bought the commander in chief. Right. Right. I, I bought the big guns, amen, and I bought the coach. Right. The same coach, listen to me, church, the same coach that coached Jesus. Yeah, that's right. The same coach that trained Jesus. Jesus himself said, and I'm getting my head on myself by about a week and a half or two weeks. Jesus himself said, Don't, why, you marvel at the, these works. I didn't do these works. The Father in me, amen. he's amen. the one that does the work. Yeah. Even Jesus said, it's not me, it's the Father in me that does the works. Oh, and by the way, greater works. Greater works will you do. Why? Because I go to the Father and I'll tell Him to send back the same coach that I had. And He's going to live... Glory to God, my yeah. joke. Glory to God, the same coach Amen. Yeah. that trained me yeah. is now going to train you. Yeah. Amen. All we have to do, because here's what I find interesting. Well, good coaches, you rarely see them 
yelling at the players from the sidelines. Right. No. Good coaches. Right. Right? Always wait until they get into the hub. Yeah. Right? Always wait until you call, call a timeout. I, I saw this high there was a high school, it was a college coach. And you know, when you're coaching college kids in football, you know, there's a lot of testosterone. They're out there, it's the heat of the battle, they're out there in the game, and you know, sometimes young men, they, they need a good coach to get a hold of them. And so this young man had missed his blocking assignment, much to the chagrin of the head coach, <laughs> because his quarterback got sacked. <laughs> And so the kids come trotting off the field, you know, did, 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 and you see the coach is yelling as he's running towards the side. The coach is yelling at him. And, 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 you know, can't use the line. Right, just yelling at him, right? And, and the kid's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he got close to the coach, and the coach grabbed him by the face mat and pulled his head. Like, okay, do I got your attention up? Yes, sir. <laughs> this whole series is going to be God getting your attention. Amen. To do what? To remind you he's on the inside of you. You're not in the fight alone. You got the owner, you got the general manager, and you got the coach. Amen. Amen. Stand your feet, everybody. Father, thank you for your overwritten word. It's life to us, sir. It's medicine to all of our flesh. And I thank you for these moms especially. Lord, an anointing upon them today now for peace. Yes. An anointing on them today for rest and relaxation. Father, that we would enjoy the day.